Hello, this is Ken Boddicher, also known as Bad Ken in the Battleforge forums, and Clark in the game. This video is a replay of the single-player PvE map Siege of Hope on expert difficulty using a pure nature deck. Siege of Hope is one of the more difficult PvE maps in the game because there's so much multitasking required. There's three main phases to the map. First, you have to defend the Western Enclave and build up power. Then you have to defend both the North and Southeast at the same time while you build up defenses. That's kind of the hardest part of the map. Finally, you have to build up an attack force strong enough to take on the final boss while you defend against groups of bugs coming in to attack your orbs. There's a lot going on here, and I'm going to have to talk pretty fast, so hopefully I can keep up. Just in time. I start off with a group of beasts, and a swift unit at the start is really good to get going up to the Western Enclave so you can start building power as soon as possible. Uh, the more power you have in this map, the better, because you need to build a lot of defenses. While the Werebeasts are heading north, I build up a self-sufficient attack force of three Windweavers and a Shaman in the south, and they're going to take care of the Twilight in the start area. When the Werebeasts get to the Western Enclave, they're just going to sit there until I have enough power to build a power wall there, and then they're going to come back the way they came. You see this attack group in the south is having no trouble. Now I have enough power for the first power well, I built it, and the Werebeasts are on their way back. The attack group is having no trouble at all with the initial group of Twilight. And I'm going to move them over by the power wells there in the south so I can start building those up. I have one power well in the south. The southern start area is taken care of. And the attack group is heading to a defensive position north of the start area. I have two power wells in the south. And the attack group is just going to sit here in this defensive position two power wells in the north, uh, taking care of twilight enemies that would otherwise be heading to the western enclave. And this defensive position is good because three power wells, four power wells in the north. This defensive position is good because there's uh, some units between here and the western enclave and it just saves a little time not having to kill them. So now I'm setting up for the first strong attack wave in this defensive position. I'm building a Mark of the Keeper and a couple of primal defenders. And the Mark of the Keeper is important because there's a couple of Twilight Thornbarks there that would really put the hurt on my Windweavers if they were allowed to attack. I've also built a few more Windweavers and another Shaman, and they're teasing the last group of enemies back here. Ah, there's the warning that I need to build my second Nature Orb. I need a second Nature Orb before, th before the main attack force, so I can use not only Roots, but also Creeping Paralysis to hold them in place uh, while my defenders and the towers uh, take care of them. So that worked out okay. Uh, the Werebeasts are now heading off to the northern enclave. And the group of uh, Windweavers and Shaman are going to take care of any stragglers down here. There's also a group of uh, Twilight Minions that's going to come through that would otherwise have headed for the orbs at the start area. And the Werebeasts are just going to go to the northern enclave and they're going gonna to put up a wall there, build a power well, and build three living towers. And that's enough to hold off the first wave attacking the north, which is a couple of Twilight Devastators. As a side here, if you mind control one of those Twilight Devastators and you let it survive, you'll get no more waves in the, st in the, s in the north. And I consider that a little bit of an exploit, so I'm not doing that in this replay. It'll probably be fixed in a future release. But at any rate, I've built my third nature orb now, which lets me bring in era three units, like the Razor Leafs, and the north to defend against the Twilight Hulks that are coming in now, along with the Devastators. Two Razor Leafs and three Living Towers in the north should be plenty to handle the next couple of waves in the north. As soon as I get enough power, I'm going to build another Razor Leaf in the center of the map, there it is, and send it down to the southeast encampment. And that's going to handle the defenses in the southeast encampment, that Razor Leaf plus a couple of towers. The southeast has already taken a couple of attacks, so it, it'll start getting strong attacks pretty soon here. I'm going to summon a shaman in the south to keep that razor leaf healthy and build the wall up there. And eventually, as soon as I have enough power, I'll have shamans in the north too. Okay, now we have the most powerful attack group in the north. Uh, Twilight Dragon has been added to the mix. And the Twilight Dragon makes things really hard in the north uh, because it has an anti-magic aura, so you can't use crowd control up there unless you get like right up on the edge of the aura. It is possible, but it's tricky. So you see, I tried it right there, but it didn't work. 
uh, it didn't catch the Twilight Hulk. And my two Razor Leafs plus three towers up there are just barely holding out. Uh, I'm going to need a little bit more firepower in the north. So I'm going to do is uh, use Enlightenment and bring in an Era 4 unit, a giant worm. And that'll sort of even up the firepower in the north. But I do need to keep that wall up in the north. It's important to keep the walls up so that the enemies are banging on the walls while your ranged units attack them. By the way, that icon in the corner of the screen is an offensive wheel of gifts. Later on, I built a defensive one too, so you see that. So my northern forces are surviving okay. I brought in a second razor leaf in the south, so there's more than enough power in the south now to handle anything that's coming. Uh, Twilight abominations have been added to the attack in the south. Uh, but in the north, my dragon's getting hurt. My razor leafs are hurt. It's kind of, it's kind of dicey up there. I added a fourth tower in the south as well. Now you can see the importance of keeping your walls up. I didn't get my wall up after the previous attack, so the Twilight Hulk was able to kill my Razor Leaf, the Dragon was able to kill my Great Worm. Fortunately I had enough excess power to summon another Razor Leaf and use Enlightenment to get another Worm for the to face the next attack. Now here's the warning that I'm only a few seconds left, so there's only going to be a couple more waves attacking. Uh, and I see I was able to get uh, crowd control off on the edge of the dragon's anti-magic shell that time, so I didn't lose too much in the north. Here come the reinforcements, so this is the last wave. And after this wave, I need to move my center units back to the orb. The reason is that there's a group of bugs coming to attack the orbs, and those Wind Weavers and Shaman aren't enough to kill the bugs on their own. They need the help of the orb and the defenders there. And in the north, I'm taking all of my units from the north and bringing them towards the middle, finishing out the last Twilight Camp here, and I used an Enlightenment to bring in a Colossus as well. And then look, I left, I left myself a Twilight Infestation uh, near the third orb there, uh, just now finishing off. That was, wasn't was too smart there, but... Anyway, now that I have this, uh, this group from the north camped in the middle of the map, they can handle all of the waves of bugs that are coming in to attack orbs. So... All I need to worry about doing now is building up my force and getting ready to go after the final boss. In the south, I'm going to take the last couple of towers out there so I can take the last couple of power wells. And then those Razor Leafs and Shaman are going to join the main force in the north. In the center of the map, where my Wind Weavers and Shaman were, I just destroyed those units because I don't need them anymore to get their power back in the Void Pool. So I have my fourth Nature Orb up now. I can start summoning Era 4 units without Enlightenment. And I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is build up a large air force. I'm gonna summon a bunch of great worms and a few swamp drakes, and to fill out my uh, population cap, and use them to take out the defenses in the center around the boss and the edge forces, so that when I do go in for the final attack on the boss, he won't have as many defenders, and there won't be a bunch of artillery raining down on my units. There's these. Twilight Bombard buildings, he's one of them right there just took out a shaman. If you let your if you let your defending forces advance too far during this phase, um, those bombards will just destroy them. They're very powerful. And you need to take them out before you go in for the f the kill on the boss, otherwise your army half your army won't make it. Okay, what happened right there was you see it dragon got separated from the rest of the group. There's these creatures called Twilight Creeps that look like uh, parasites. And what they do is uh, they have they fire this beam that teleports a unit next to the boss. There was a parasite right that went down, or a creep that went down right there, a little green pool. Anyway, they, they teleport the unit next to the boss, and for ground unit, that's a death sentence because the boss is surrounded by very strong support units. For air units can usually get away from, get away when the, after they've been teleported, and especially the Era 4 units like these Great Worms, relatively strong, can survive being teleported. But they want to take out as many of those Twilight Creeps as possible before the army goes in, because 
Getting teleported next to the boss is would be bad. Oh, there, a swamp drake got teleported, but it made it out, looks like. You don't want your ma your final attack force to be split up just at the moment that you need it. So the worms and the swamp drakes are going to continue making attacks, going back and healing. Here they're taking an air tower and a bombard out on the left, taking out a tower and a couple units in the back, and then going back to heal. Now I think I'm at my pop cap now, so I'm gonna just go and finish stuff off. Here they go. One of them got uh, paralyzed by a Twilight Claw guy, but he made it away. And they weren't able to finish off that Twilight Abomination. I'm gonna go back and do that shortly after they've healed up. I'm building a a living tower here because I've noticed that sometimes when you have a building up your units heal faster than just around orbs and power wells for some reason. I don't think it's supposed to be like that but that's how it works. Oh, another Twilight Creep teleported a dragon so I had to retreat there. But they're gonna go right back and take out that Twilight Creep and go back and take out the towers. So now I've taken out most of the support units and buildings around the final boss, so it's time to go in for the kill. Gonna uproot the razor leaves, go in and focus on the boss, and he's gonna go down pretty quick with all this firepower. Uh, so there you have it. Hope you've enjoyed this replay, and I hope you find it helpful.